you want to wave the flag to a cloud marketplace, to a hyperscaler that, hey, we're having success. We're building customer wins. We're seeing momentum. We're seeing adoption. They get excited and they lean in with partners that are really proving that they're winning customers. They're accelerating co-sell. They're driving go-to-market. They have that expertise and they're building new innovation with the with the hyperscalers. These are kind of the, the big motions that I, every hyperscaler doubles and triples down on partners that are covering these aspects. Join our five-week course on cloud marketplaces and learn how to tap into the $250 billion spend that enterprises have committed to AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Discover the future of go-to-market with Roman. During weekly sessions, you'll learn how to leverage this fast-growing channel and network with industry experts and partnership leaders. We'll dive into marketplace strategies, internal buy-in, building relationships with the cloud, and mastering co-sell. Join our upcoming cohort. Today, I'm really excited to have with us Brian Stravis, former AWS marketplace category and partner lead. Brian has incredible experience almost five years in AWS where he led Marketplace and he's going to share with us his in-depth knowledge, what are the tactics and frameworks exist for partnering with AWS, what are the do's and don'ts, and how should you figure out your superpowers when partnering with AWS. Without further ado, Brian Strauss. And it's funny because you say frameworks, right? And I've always tried to build an analogy for what partnerships mean to me. I've kind of distilled this down into the simplest form of a garden or a yard. Because at the end of the day, none of your crops or vegetation or trees or grass, they're not the same. Same thing with your partnerships. And so we'll dive into that and why you know you need to provide different types of nutrients, different types of love and attention to each type of partnerships. And ultimately, like why are the hyperscalers different? How do you differentiate with the hyperscalers? How do you build a superpower to really capitalize and maximize the value that a hyperscale can bring to you, to your business? And so first things first, I think all of us can attest, not all partnerships, not all crops are the same, right? Your ISV partnerships, your reseller partnerships, your consulting partner, your MSVs, not the same. And what is 100% for sure, is your hyperscaler partnerships are very different than all of your other partnerships because of the type of resources, the types of programs, the type of scale and magnitude that these uh, hyperscalers can provide to your business. But even more important is none of your partnerships have the same goals, right? Some of your, your partners are really catering towards marketing and awareness and branding, logos, where some are really co-sell driven, some are lead gen driven, some are, you know, co-innovation driven, and they really want to build deeper integrations and a better connective tissue from a technical standpoint. Some are focused on global expansion using global resources from a reseller and MSP in local markets. Some also have different incentives and goals tied to the, the partnerships. So it's very important to understand your hyperscaler partnerships have different goals in mind than maybe your consulting partner, your ISV partnerships. Last but not least, every single partnership has different levels of executive buy-in, different levels of line of business uh, support. Some of your partners don't even have a marketing team to, to assist you from a lead gen perspective. Some of your partnerships don't have a product or an engineering uh, entity that is focused on deepening it, uh, the partnership from a co-innovation co uh, standpoint. So it's really important to understand that the love and attention that you get from every partner is very different, but the love and attention that you get from a hyperscaler is drastically different because you're trying to fight for love and attention against hundreds of thousands of other partners. So I asked this really silly question, but like, have you ever stopped watering a plant? What happens? I think all of us have have experienced this. I've I've I filled multiple plants in my life, and they, even more so when you stop leaning into a hyperscaler, it comes to a screeching halt. Because at the end of the day, they have hundreds of other partners that they have waiting in line to support, and that they can nurture, and that they can give attention to. And so, I, as 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 silly as it sounds, or as simple as it sounds. When you stop watering a hyperscaler partnership, you really have to drive that acceleration and crank that flywheel even harder once you get it going again, 
because the type of meeting cadence, how often you're meeting with your, your partner development manager, your marketplace team, very different than when you're meeting with an ISV or a consulting partner. The same type of resource allocation, the same type of funding, investment, sales enablement that a hyperscaler requires, very different. When making sure that your team is aligned from a goals and product standpoint and engineering standpoint is very different. Thanks so much, Brian. And uh, you you just touched that each hyperscaler has hundreds of thousands of partners. And uh, given that every company struggle to stand out, they sort of believe that they would they would list on marketplace and they would get adoption immediately. And this is not happening. Like, what is your advice? Uh, how they should be partnering with hyperscalers instead? How do you get above the noise, right? How do you stand out? How do you develop that superpower that makes a hyperscaler lean in and really want to? do co-selling with you, do go to market with you, do joint activation, do joint customer events with you. I I have this, this mentality of how you build that thing. And this framework, you know, it, it doesn't work for everyone, but I think it, you start out with understanding how hyperscalers partner. They believe in the philosophy of build, market, sell, and recreating that flywheel. Because if you're building new solutions, if you're building a new marketplace listing, you sure you sure want to market it. You sure want to sell it just like any other product. And so as you build that, I think first and foremost, you have to listen to your customers. What are they saying? What are, what are some of the gaps in your, your product? What are some of the weaknesses that you have that a hyperscaler might be able to facilitate or support you in? Next, it's looking at where your product roadmap and product alignment aligns with a hyperscaler. Look, hyperscalers are investing in you know, Gen AI and data warehouses and uh, contact centers and a wide range of AI ML use cases across every single industry. Figure out where there's alignment or parity. Next, you kind of want to showcase of like, how do you stand out and build that expertise? It could be simple as getting certified individuals, but also what are some of the competencies? What are some of the the industries that you play better in? What are some of the use cases that you play better in so that you can really acknowledge or, you know, build that, that muscle? Then it kind of feeds into, all right, so we, we just developed a better, uh, you know, innovation opportunity. We just developed our expertise in a specific cloud uh, service provider. How do we build some go to market? How do we build some, use the, the hyperscalers megaphone to help amplify and augment our existing position in the market? Next, you kind of feed into how we're all, like every alliance and partner role is focused on co-sell, right? Like, oh, or just the ROI. You have to drive some type of ROI for organizations to continue to invest in you. And so what are some of the, the customer sweet spots? What are some of the sales plays? What are some of the go-to-market packages that you're using to really drive awareness and drive ROI or co-sell acceleration? Last but not least, if you're doing your job well, you're building thought leadership. You're having speaking engagements at industry events. You're you're building PR. You're building blog collateral to to really wave the flag of like, hey, this hyperscaler partnership is working. So what do I mean by all this? Right. So building your superpower to me starts as just a table stakes of you want to build some customer references. Every single hyperscaler cares about customer stories. They want to hear you you solve customer challenge by doing X, Y, and Z. Get some case studies, understand what your customer feedback is of like, you know, you have a gap in how you're using the data warehouse, or you have a gap in your AI ML use cases. That leads them to start to invent or figure out innovation opportunities where they might be able to lean in with you. What do I mean by innovation? What Beyond just like developing a new product, new solution, like new new service. You could launch a new marketplace listing. You could deepen your, your AI ML capabilities. You could deepen your, your joint offering to your customers. But at the end of the day, you have your own product roadmap. For the next 12, 18, 24 months, your product and engineering team have a roadmap. So does AWS, so does GCP, so does Azure. And so figuring out where that alignment is and figuring out where there's an opportunity for collaboration, super important. This kind of feeds into my next point of if you are the the top player in AIML, you're the top player in security, you are the top player in advertising and marketing or financial services or X, Y, and Z, like there's opportunities within these partner programs 
to develop that expertise, to make sure that you get competencies or validations based on what you are proven and validated on uh, based on an industry use case or, or a horizontal use case, or even just a service level, right? So I think that's very important as well is because if you were to, to show to a hyperscaler that our customers are saying we're the best in this, we're innovating in this, we have the proven expertise in this, let's figure it out how do we actually go to market together, right? Like what are we doing from a joint messaging standpoint? What are we differentiating our product in by using, you know, X AWS service or Y GCP service or Z Azure service, right? And so it's figuring out what is that joint messaging? What does that marketing look like? Are we building free trial campaigns? Are we doing customer activations, joint workshops, case studies, webinars, executive roundtables? The list goes on on what type of go-to-market opportunities you can develop. And being very prescriptive or having an opinion on where a hyperscaler can fit into your marketing calendar, very important. Next, as I said, every single alliance team, every single partnership is evaluating on ROI. But I think one of the biggest things that I, I cannot convey enough is making not like you could build co-sell, like you could you could share leads, do account mapping. But if your sellers don't know how to position or message a cloud marketplace, it's going to be an uphill battle. If your sellers are not comp neutral and they get penalized for doing a deal through a cloud marketplace, it's going to be an uphill battle. Making sure that your teams understand how to leverage this with procurement, with operations, with sales, with marketing is very important because again, your alliance team, it can't just be a one, like a one person loving and attending to the garden. You need other, you need some support. You need some resources to really activate that co-sell motion at scale. Last piece of this is if you are doing your job correctly, you're building thought leadership. You want to wave the flag to a cloud marketplace or to a cloud marketplace, to a hyperscaler that, hey, we're having success. We're building customer wins. We're seeing momentum. We're seeing adoption. They get excited and they lean in with partners that are really proving that they're 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 winning customers. They're accelerating co-sell, they're driving go-to-market, they have that expertise, and they're building new innovation with the with the hyperscalers. These are kind of the, the big motions that I cannot, I, I would say every hyperscaler doubles and triples down on partners that are covering these aspects. I think of this is like really great frameworks. Uh, I've seen that a lot of companies sort of struggle to understand like what is a good way to align themselves uh, sort of with, with hyperscalers in a sense that if I'm a partnership manager or like alliance manager and I'm um, sort of working with my counterpart to this uh, in AWS, for example, uh, like what, what are the things that should be true on sort of my, on my side? So we work closer together. Like who should I connect with on hyperscale side? And like what is the best practice there? If you're an alliance lead and you are trying to navigate a hyperscaler by yourself, it's going to be a slow moving process. Um, same thing is if you try to clean up your yard or try to plant a new tree or plant, you know, more in your garden or take care of your garden, it takes a lot more time if you're, if you don't have people helping you or you don't have nutrients to help you or you don't have soil or, you know, equipment to help you. Everyone needs some help. And so as it pertains with hyperscalers, I, it kind of goes back to that build market sell framework. If you don't work with your product and engineering team to understand what their roadmap looks like and where AWS can slot in or any hyperscaler for that matter can slot in, it's going to be tough because you won't be able to, you won't be able to nurture that build pillar. Same thing from a market standpoint. I'd be going to our CMO or VP of product or, or, you know, product marketing, partner marketing and understand what our partner marketing calendar or our marketing calendar looks like. What are the thematic plays? What are the industries that we're targeting? What are the types of personas that we're targeting? And where can a hyperscaler fit in? Do they have market development funds? Are they willing to provide speakers? Are they willing to give us access to their customers? Like, what are the opportunities where we can bring in a hyperscaler to help augment or amplify our message in the, or in the market? And then the last piece of that puzzle is if you are not working with your VP of sales, your CRO, your CFO on getting buy-in on how to activate a cloud marketplace, it's going to be an uphill battle. <laughs>